Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Derek Bennett and on this channel we talk about everything bass related. Bass tutorials, bass lessons, if you want to enhance your playing to that next level, this is where to do it. So consider subscribing if that's you. So we're going to be talking about one of the number one questions, like I said, how long should I practice? I get this question almost every other day uh, and I've seen it thousands of times. There's four things I want you to consider when thinking about how long you should practice. <laughs> So we're not going to be doing too much playing today. I want to talk to you guys and make sure your mindset and your mind frame is the right way before you start practicing because it can be so challenging once you hit that plateau or if you don't know exactly what you should do when you're practicing, when you grab your bass and you sit down and you actually start the process of practicing. Number one is what you're practicing. Is it an exercise? Is it a scale? Uh, the level of difficulty of what you're practicing because obviously the harder it is, the longer it should take you to be able to learn or get down in muscle memory. So if you're practicing something like a like a scale or something like that, or if you're practicing just one note or a technique, bringing your finger through the string and up to the next, getting a nice clean sound out of your bass. But if you are a beginner, obviously it's gonna take you some time to learn how to do that. Now that comes to my second point, the level of skill you're capable of. Okay, so if you're a beginner, if you're an intermediate, if you're an advanced player, obviously something like that is going to be a breeze if you already, especially if you already know it and you can pick up faster. Or if you're practicing an exercise, that's one of my exercises that I, we've done a long time ago. The arpeggios. I mean, if you're a beginner, you can pick up on that. But not necessarily as quick and as clean as that. So that might take time as well. So number one, what you're practicing, the level of difficulty of what you're practicing. Number two, your level, your skill level. Where are you in your playing? Are you a beginner? Are you an intermediate? Have you been playing for six months versus six years? That brings me to my third point, your retention level. Everybody's different and everybody has uh, different retention levels. Everybody has different memory levels. You know, you can pick up things faster than other people. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody before that has this crazy photographic memory um, that they can recall anything back to you. So I've been fortunate enough to play with some amazing musicians in my early days of playing bass, and I've noticed that their retention level was through the roof. Uh, we would have to learn 10 songs in a couple days, and they will come to the rehearsal as if they've been playing it for 10 years. Uh, and just their retention level is just that quick and that spot on. Some other people takes a little bit longer for their retention. So you have to take that into consideration as well. So number one is what you're practicing, the level of difficulty. Number two, your skill level, where you are in your playing. Number three is retention. How is your retention? Do you notice that you are uh, a slower learner? Uh, that can be in school as well. You can notice that as well um, as far as picking up things and uh, memorizing different things that you need to know uh, in academics as well. Uh, that can kind of go along with it. Um, I was a great math student, so uh, my retention is, is pretty good. And a lot of music that you deal with and, and that you play is a lot to do with math. So when you take that into consideration, uh, most math students or most musicians are pretty good at numbers. Um, I don't know. You can... Don't quote me on that, but I've noticed in my day when I talk to a lot of musicians, they're good with numbers as well. Uh, so number four, that brings me to my last point, the passion that you have for what you're practicing or even your instrument. So that takes me to a time where I used to do private lessons and some of the parents would have their children take lessons. They will be maybe seven, eight, nine, ten years old, and the kid isn't interested at all. Just the parent wants to be able to say, hey, my son plays this or my daughter plays bass. And, you know, they want that for their kid. And that's the almost one of the worst mistakes you can do if they're not interested in it at first. I would say wait until they're interested and have a, you know, a certain curiosity for the instrument and then go ahead and pursue the lessons or pursue the teaching or the knowledge of the tutorials. But you have to have the passion for what you're playing. If you're playing something boring uh, or if you're practicing something boring or an exercise that's boring that you really don't find too fun at all, you will lose sight of it. You'll lose 
the momentum. You'll lose the energy for whatever you're doing. So I would say make sure that practice routine or whatever you're practicing is something that you like. That's why I try to create a lot of exercises uh, around a lot of different riffs that I do or that are uh, applicable to the song or a song that I'm playing. So I can be able to uh, create something that I can put inside of a song. <laughs> So creating exercises around different grooves or different things that you will play realistically definitely boosts that enjoyment level uh, so you won't get bored as quick. So the passion for what you're playing, you have to love it. You have to love it because you're going to be spending some time practicing. If you don't love the instrument, if you don't love the process, you're going to struggle. OK, so let's go back over that. Number one, what you're playing. What exercise? Is it a scale? Is it a bass line? Is it a riff? Is it uh, some chords? Is it a technique? Right? Consider what you're playing. Number two, what's your skill level? You're a beginner, intermediate. How long have you been playing? Right? Number three, the retention level. Recognize and be self-aware of your retention level because everybody doesn't learn the same pace. Number four, the passion for it. So guys, just keep that in mind the next time you're wondering how long you should practice a certain thing or a certain exercise or scale, whatever it may be. Uh, and one thing I wanted to add to that as well is when you're practicing a scale or an exercise, make sure you get it clean, clear, and precise. I say that after every single lesson, clean, clear, and precise. I would not move on until I can get that one thing clean, clear, and precise and you're not fumbling with it and you're comfortable enough to play it several times to where you're not messing up. So if I'm playing that same, let's take that same exercise, the arpeggio alter alternating between the minor and the major. If I were to do, if I were to do that and mess up, I want to go right back to the beginning. And make sure I get it nice and clean. Make sure you get that nice and clean until you're able to move on to the next and make sure you can do it without thinking. You want to get to the point where it's engraved in your brain so much to where you don't even have to think about it. That's the point that I like to get to when I'm practicing a certain subject or a topic or a category of, of, a, of a technique or a scale or a riff that I'm doing. So I like to keep that in mind too. Just get comfortable enough to where I don't have to think about it. So keep that in mind too, guys, when you're practicing. Also. Don't beat yourself up when you're practicing as well. When you're setting a time to practice, you have to practice eight hours, nine hours a day. That is not true. If you have a passion for it, obviously, of course, it's very easy to go eight, nine hours. That's what I used to do all the time, sometimes still now to this day. Uh, three, four hours. Don't set a time limit. Just don't even set a clock. If you're, if you're pressed for time, understood, completely understood. Set you know 20 minutes aside. Make sure it's it's a practical practice, if that makes any sense. Make sure you're making that practice count, right? And uh, you're playing things that's, that's not redundant, that's going to make you grow. So we have tons of exercises here along with different ways to help you practice to make it count. Make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. If you have any questions, you know what to do. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.